resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, my guest for today is Didi Menendez. She was born in Cuba, and she's the creator and publisher of Poets and Artists. She has been curating group exhibitions since 2013, and a lot of those shows have been with myself here at the Joby Art Center. In 2018, she has several group exhibitions planned already, including WTF at Art Palm Beach International Art Fair, Visions of Venus, curated by Dr. Elaine Melody Smith, Painting the Figure Now, curated by Walt Morton, Chronicles of a Future Foretold, curated by Samuel Peralta, The Human Condition, curated by Stephen Deleuze, and she has already made plans for the 2019 season. So you want to catch all of her upcoming publications and exhibition calls at www.poisonartist.com. And I'm really excited to have in the show today, Didi Menendez. Hi, Didi. How are you doing today? Hi, Sergio. How are you? I am doing great. Are you ready to take us to the next level? I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Didi. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. This is a, kind of a cold day here in uh, Winterland, but <laughs> it's good right. that, you, you know, through the technology we can connect and uh, have a nice conversation. I've been looking forward to our talk today and our, our conversation. There's a lot of, I was trying to think, you know, there's a lot of things that we have done together. Um, right. I, was trying, mm -hmm. I was trying to think, what's your title, you know, but you do so many things. You, oh, you're an artist yeah. yourself. Right. You well, run a magazine. So Yeah, I, don't, I, I really don't have a title that I'm 100% true to because I do so many, <laughs> like you said. So artists, I don't really, I, that's like the last title I would put in any of my hats. <laughs> so. Okay, and, but you also run a magazine, you're a publisher, you're, you're a poet too, which I've seen I'm a some poet, of that. right, uh, yeah. You're a curator. Right. And producer, promoter of different things. So uh, I think it's going to be a great conversation where we can talk a little bit about kind of uh, your journey from, you know, one thing into the next and uh, how things have evolved for you. And things are always changing, which is kind of what I like. That's why I like working with you too. You know, you and I were always kind of like seeing what's new, seeing what's uh, what's green in, in the horizon, right? And, and going there right. and testing it. So yeah, I think that's, that's, true. <laughs> that's one thing that I think... Uh, uh, we have that in common. We we like to talk about. So, uh, Didi, I was uh, also thinking about, you know, I don't remember which one exactly was the very first show that we did together. Was it Fixation? Uh, the no, first or, show was from motion or, to oh, from, from still from motion to stillness. That is in correct. In 2013, yes. 2013. And that show, yeah, we had uh, like Victoria Selbach in it, and Daniel mm -hmm. Maidman was in it. And then the next one, I think, was Fixation. Fixation, right. And, and then, we also had um, Freak Out. Freak, yeah, Freak Out. Oh, yeah, Freak Out. And mm -hmm. we had... Um, Chevere in Miami, right? Chevere, right, in Miami. We did that one in Miami. And so, so, we've had a, so we've had a few shows that we've curated together. Right, and, and it's always... Mm -hmm. <coughs> Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that many of the same artists we feature... Mm -hmm. in the same shows, but they always come up with new work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's always interesting to see how they've evolved throughout the years. Exactly, yeah, to see, mm -hmm. yeah, over time, you know, what an artist mm -hmm. may be interested on or working at uh, at any given time is quite quite interesting too. And, um, right. you know, as we have collaborated in various shows, something that uh, you like to do a lot, which is to create a sense of community and being involved with artists, mm -hmm which is something that I love too as well. So I think this is going to be a good a good conversation. So um, Didi, before we go kind of like into some of the projects and things that you have done and that you're still doing right now, uh, why don't we go back a little bit in time and tell us a little bit about, you know, your story, you know, wherever you want to start and how did you come up to where you are at now? Well, I first started publishing back in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And I usually and I started just publishing poetry. Okay. And I started the poetry publication by back then there were some poetry for, forums, mm -hmm. and so then I've it's always been around the community. It's it's never been just you know something that I came up with. It's always been 
evolved around a community of some sort. It used to be with a poetry, and now it's a poetry and art. Mm-hmm. And lately it's more art than poetry, but I still try to keep poetry in the mix. Right. And um, what? And basically, some of my some of the poetry that we've published, I, I'm very proud of the poetry I've published. I've I, we've won a Pushcart Prize. Hmm. We've been in Best American Poetry several times. We've mm-hmm. been in several anthologies also. So I'm very proud of what I've done with the poetry side. And now I'm trying somehow to level that with the art. And I think I'm. I think I may have mm-hmm. accomplished some of the same height that I did with the poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I won't let the yeah. I won't let the audience answer that one. But I think I'm I'm doing okay in the art world too. That's great. That's fantastic. So, now, did you, where does your uh, love for art and poetry come from? Maybe tell us a little bit about your childhood or whatever you want to share about that. Well, I you know I never really wrote poetry until I started getting online and and really? started for some somehow some way I ended up with poetry, hanging out with poets online and writers. Okay. So I never really wrote poetry or or even thought about poetry, but. Um, Somehow I ended up in that in, uh, community, and yeah. then I started writing it myself and publishing it. And um, so it's not as if I I went to school and studied creative writing. I didn't. As a matter of fact, I I the the I I didn't even I don't even have a degree, a college degree, because I decided to get married early, and I actually put one of my ex husband. I worked so he could get his degree. Which is really a thing that a lot of women did back then because it was a different time, and they thought, "Oh, great, I'll be married to this guy forever." But no, it didn't work out that way. Mm-hmm. So, but I have uh, beautiful children, and they've gone on to. They're now all grown, and they all have their own life, and so I guess I did all right. <laughs> you have done great, that. right? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, when when is it the first time that you saw an opportunity to work online with like in the case of poetry that which was kind of like your first uh, introduction? Yeah, to that? you know after the divorce, since I brought up my husband, my ex husband, after my two, I have I've been married twice, but after the second divorce, I somehow ended up online because my children were little and I didn't have any social interaction with adults practically, you know. Mm-hmm. So online gave me that that social area that was missing in my, my, my real life, you know, I guess mm-hmm. I, not real life, but my, in my life. Mm-hmm. So I ended up wanting to learn how to, all those great pages I, w- I saw online, I wanted to learn how to do it myself. But I didn't go to school for that. I taught myself how to write code and, and HTML and all that. So I ended up, uh, Back then, I didn't have a Mac. I used something, a, a program that's no longer around, Front Page, is what it was oh, yeah, called. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, that's what I learned to use. And I started uh, MeatBoyCS.com, and I, and I started publishing online. And again, that took off. And, and then eventually, I went into print. In the mid-2000s, I went into print. Mm-hmm. Print on demand, though. I've always mm-hmm. been on print on demand. It started with Lulu.com, and then I moved over to to Amazon, and then I moved over to uh, McLeod, and now I'm on Blurb. <laughs> because Blurb, because I've always been trying, the problem with print on demand at the beginning was that you mm-hmm. couldn't, I couldn't really find quality print. Okay. Uh, you know, and then when I started publishing the artists, with poetry didn't matter that much, mm-hmm. because it was just black and white, you know, whatever. But when I started publishing artists, the companies that were out there offering print on demand for for a really nice quality print weren't out mm-hmm. there. You know, Amazon really ne- has never really been a great, createspace.com is a website that we use for Amazon. Their print quality is really not very good. But mm-hmm. Blurb it recently, like a, in the last two years or so, started pr- uh, offering a magazine layout with high mm-hmm. quality paper. So that's uh-huh. when I joined that print-on-demand option. So now we print really nice magazines, and they also have books, uh, options, mm-hmm. and other formats that I sometimes use. So that's how I ended up print, uh, using uh, the print for the magazine. Right. 
So, and, and how was your transition then between the poetry and the art? You know, so you started with the poetry and publishing poets and working with poets. At what point right. then art came in and became part of uh, well, it, your interest? It, yeah, you know, it came in when I started painting myself. Oh, okay. Because I, 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 I used to paint when I was a teenager, but then after I started, you know, when I got married and I started raising my family, I left it up behind. Mm -hmm. But then when my kids were older, when they were teenagers, I went back to painting. Okay. And that was in 2008, 2007, 2008. And that's around the same time that I inaugurate. I said, oh, well, this is interesting to me. I want to, <laughs> you know. So uh -huh. I got back and tried to get back into the community of art, therefore... There we go again with the community. Mm -hmm. I joined, you know, I tried to join and find artists because now I was painting also. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, if, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to publish what I like. So what right. I don't, I don't have anybody really dictating to me of what I can publish or not publish. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to go and join poetry and art, which were the two things that I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 2008. Wow. And then, uh, of course, uh, social media came along, and then we all became hooked to that, and became right. uh, for you know for people like you and me became a tool not only uh, for social uh, conversations and social interaction, but also became a working mm -hmm. tool, right? Which both of you, we you know, you and I, we use quite a bit to connect with artists, to find artists, to interact, to organize, okay. to do all kinds of things. Meaning that most of, and, and that's the reality of things, you know, most of. The things that I do as curator and and also as galleries and it's not it, it all happens almost online. You know, it's hardly you write things on paper anymore. It's conversations, everything is online, and it just has right. become like this other environment that is uh, that is so important in our art careers. I think. Um, mm -hmm. t tell me a little bit ab about your immersion into into that because uh, you you really like Facebook as uh, kind of like the platform that you oh use yeah for, for actually quite a bit. yeah. I use Facebook a lot. I was mm -hmm. back in 2006. I brought in every poet. Mm -hmm. I invited every poet, and then I was connected to an artist at the time mm -hmm. into Facebook. And people would say, "Why are you on Facebook? That's just for college kids." And I say, yeah, <laughs> "Yeah, well, just just watch. <laughs> just watch. Just right. watch. Yeah." Mm -hmm. And 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 sure enough. But lately, I have a love and hate relationship with Facebook. Yeah, I've tried to leave. Do. <laughs> I don't know how many times. I've tried, I've unfriended people a million times because I'm thinking, okay, I'm leaving. I don't want my stuff out there. I've deleted my posts. Anyhow, okay. so I have a love and hate relationship with, them, but with Facebook. And that's, but it turns out you either love them or leave them. And I have to keep coming back <laughs> because that's where everybody is. Exactly. So I need to communicate with my artists and the poets and what have you and, and galleries and collectors hmm. and, and, it's not just the artists that I communicate with. I'm, I'm, I talk to you and other other galleries and what have you on Facebook a few mm -hmm. times a week. Right. You know, right. depending on what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So, so I use it as a as a tool to communicate with what my, about my projects mm -hmm. and to ask people if they want to be in the in the magazine or if they want to be interviewed or what have you. So I do a lot of my, my social media on Facebook, but I also use Instagram also. I also send out mm -hmm. messages through Instagram. So mm -hmm. those are the two tools that I mostly use. And then just recently I, I decided to start using patreon.com mm -hmm. and I set up my magazine. I've been on there for about five months and it's working out really well. Mm -hmm. because it gives me a chance before I was just like willy nilly everywhere. You know, anybody that would come around, I talked to them or what have you, but now right, right. I can focus on a, on a group of mm -hmm. artists, collectors, galleries who belong to my page, who are members. These mm -hmm. are members right. of my Patreon and I can just target these specific artists and galleries and what have you and help promote them. Right. Because now I have a focus. I know who mm -hmm. I need to. I know who I need to promote. I know, and this is why I've been using like BuzzFeed community lately because mm -hmm. it, it. I I notice that a lot of people don't like looking at my website for whatever reason. They prefer to go look at all the cats and dogs and <laughs> posts that people post online. You know, funny things. Right. And BuzzFeed 
is one of those websites, and it's and there's a, a way for for people to post on the BuzzFeed community, and that's what I've been using. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I come up with ideas for articles where I can promote Instagram mm-hmm. and 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 get additional followers for my artists that are mm-hmm. part of our members. Mm-hmm. And I come up with crazy lists like. One I just published recently was a hundred studio artists, uh, artist studios, Mm -hmm. 100 artist studios. I've also done um, other lists like uh, hyper, the the real hyper realist and, Mm -hmm. and, and uh, who are the badass artists out there and a hundred portraits, you know, so I come up with these, and then I give my artists and from the Patreon site, a Mm -hmm. hashtag and I've been mm-hmm. teaching them how to use hashtags on Instagram. So mm-hmm. I give them a secret hashtag to use so that I can find their their posts. So it's kind of like a mm-hmm. publishing tool. I'm using it like right. a publishing tool, like Instagram. So I tell them, okay, use da- a hashtag BD, hey BD, whatever. Okay, mm-hmm. so whatever it is. And so then they do that, and then when I go create my BuzzFeed list, I mm-hmm. look for my hashtag on Instagram, and then I can use that link to that specific image on Instagram on BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting because then that, when I do that, then what happens is when people click on it, then they go directly to the Instagram post, and then they can follow that artist. Right, right. See? See which how that a, works? Exactly, which is a fascinating way of you know, working uh, the publishing realm, but and you don't even have to like download the pictures yourself anymore mm-hmm. and put them on a page now you know through the uh, right. Instagram embed you can do that and so it benefits the artists in such a great way too because you know as they are being published in these on, online sites then you know like you said people can just if they like the work they can just follow that artist right there immediately and and right. that's, that's just that's just a great way of using the technology And so this has been a way to, to for my artists to receive additional followers and it seems to mm-hmm. help each time mm-hmm. I use I use one of their posts, they do increase their followers. So again, mm-hmm. I'm targeting my members, my right. artists. Exactly. And I'm exactly. not do sometimes. Sometimes I do go outside of the of the of the list and go to other. Like for example, I just published the ten top figurative galleries. Mm-hmm. Many of those galleries that I that I listed, I don't. So I don't have any. I haven't done any groups with them, any mm-hmm. group shows with them, or what have you. But right. I, I I monitor them on Artsy, and I also accepted nominations from my members, which many right. of them include collectors, mm-hmm. and they mention such and such a gallery and what have you. So then I I you know I consider their input when I'm doing right. these lists. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily a list based on just my members. Sometimes I go outside of, like, for the 50 badass artists, I didn't, you know, only a few of those are, well, maybe maybe a third of them are members. The other are people that I've been following on Instagram, and mm-hmm. I think their work is just great. Mm-hmm. It's just fantastic, and I'd love to be able to publish all of them, but, you know, they're so badass, they don't want anything to do with me. <laughs> 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 but anyhow, <laughs> the, that's how I've been using, you know, yeah. Patreon and BuzzFeed community and my magazine and what right. have you. So that's how that works. Well, it is fascinating, you know, to see uh, over time since I've met you, uh, how you've been uh, working your way around through all this technology, through all these different mediums. And and like you said, you know, always trying to find the way in which, you know, a new platform comes out. And oftentimes we send each other little messages through Facebook, you know, how you check this or that, and and then trying to find mm-hmm. a way to to make it work for what you want to do, which at the end is like you love promoting the art and the artists uh, who you're working mm-hmm. with and the shows and things, and but trying to find that that angle within a particular platform that can allow you to do that, you know, and and it's a right. trial and an error process, you know, some some things work better than others, uh, some things, mm-hmm. so or sometimes you know, as technology changes, like you say, you know, we all started with Facebook, we all loved it, then Facebook started to change their rules too and their algorithms right. and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this is not what we you know, <laughs> what we thought it was or what it once mm-hmm. was. But but it's the reality right, of was. the medium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, as you said, as 
as you adapted something back in the day when you know everybody thought that Facebook was for kids, you know now mm-hmm. it's it's a different way. Now we are all the, all of us you know thirties and forties and over. We are in Facebook, and now all the younger kids that are now in Snapchat, right? And they don't want anything to do right. with Facebook. So maybe eventually we'll have to <laughs> migrate there too. So Well, it, yeah, that one's going to be a little <laughs> more difficult for me, Snapchat. But anyhow, yes, you're right. You know, I'm always looking for mm-hmm. the next great big thing that's going to bring in an audience yeah. for my artists mm-hmm. and, that, and my writers. I'm mm-hmm. looking to see where I can make something go, you know, wild on the mm-hmm. internet and everybody's going to want to, you know, I'm trying to break the internet with a post, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or with a, a art or with some, or with a poem. Once right. back in the day, back in the day, which was only like three years, three or like, no, make that about seven years ago mm-hmm. or le- about six or seven years ago, I posted a poem by Charles Jensen, mm-hmm. which was one of it was, was a poem in one of our poets and artists uh, issues back in 2010. Mm-hmm. A few months after that, I posted the poem online, yeah. and every, it got it got over a hundred thousand views wow. in like very wow. minimal time. And it was a poem, and you know why mm-hmm. it did so well? Because at the time, you remember those movies with the vampire? I forget what they're called, Twilight. Oh yeah. But the huh? movie, Okay, so the, 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 so that movie was popular at the time, and then the poem was about mm-hmm. a ghost mm-hmm. and the desert, and it spoke about in such a way, it was about a love poem. It was a love poem, mm-hmm. but the way it was written, I think it attracted the teenagers. Oh, wow. They really loved that poem. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was, I mean, that poem did so great. That it's still, nobody yet has, from any of the, not even an artist has toppled that that, uh, amount of views, Mm -hmm. you know. So so that's what I'm trying to do every day is see where I can do another, you know, have a great hit. (laughs) Right, right. So something goes viral. That's what I want. (laughs) We're, we're we're fighting against the algorithms. <laughs> and right, to, that's the problem now. It's not the same the... as it used to be. Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so what are so. You know, speaking about that? What are some of the challenges that you see now? You know, it, it's it's a battle um, that we all have a battle for attention, right? We're all seeking for the attention mm-hmm. of the viewer, uh, and uh, everything just moves so quickly and so fast, and right. one thing goes and rolls, mm-hmm. and the next, and the next. Uh, what's what are some of the challenges for you as a as a publisher of working in an environment like this that changes so quickly? Where you know before, um, you know with print media, it was, yeah. people would sit down and and scroll. You know, I, I say scroll. I'm sorry, change page by page. Now we scroll, uh-huh. right? We swipe and and right. it's that immediacy. Uh, what are some of the challenges for you to to okay. work in that environment? Yeah, my biggest challenge is is that I'm ahead of everybody else. That's mm-hmm. my problem, and it's hard for people to keep up with me. Mm-hmm. So I realize that I have to slow down a little bit because in within the Patreon community that, that I've set up, I'm teaching my the, my artists how mm-hmm. to use the tools that we need to get the job done. Mm-hmm. So I'm teaching them about hashtags. Fine. But mm-hmm. Dropbox is something I use quite a bit. Right. And, and because we have so many submissions coming in, mm-hmm. okay, it's really hard. I've been trying to teach them. I don't want, you know, I want it done in such a way. Mm-hmm. And so then I try to communicate that with them. But, but and many of them get it. But there's mm-hmm. still a couple just straggling here and there that don't understand how to use Dropbox. Mm-hmm. So it's a continual process to, to teach people how to fish so I don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, so they can, they can feed themselves, right? That's the right. whole mm-hmm. initial thing that we always try to do is try to get people to learn how to do something so that I don't have to then mm-hmm. do extra service, servicing right. at my end to get, get a folder put into a, into a submission. Exactly. So my biggest struggle is trying to keep, get people up to speed on mm-hmm. technology. Right. That's the biggest the struggle that I have. 
And it's all, and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to say, oh, I mastered this. Everybody's got it because it's just every day, like you said, there's something, something new comes up. <laughs> exactly. Right. So it's going to be an impossible task. You know, right. a lot of people get it, but it's just continuous. You know, and right. every day there's something new and something different, or something happens where they change a program, and then we have, like you said, like the algorithms or what have you. So mm -hmm. then everything changes, and then I've got to start again. You know. <laughs> So right. that's my biggest that's my biggest struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's it's quite it requires a lot of uh, always being on the learning curve and trying to you know being up to date and up to speed on what's changing, what's coming, you know, right mm -hmm. around the corner, trying to you know beat that before everybody else does, so that so that we know right. how to operate in that new environment. Uh, which, right, uh, and that's um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to say, that's why your your community, Art Next Level, and then my Patreon community really is an asset for all these artists to join. Mm -hmm. right. Because they're learn we're trying to teach them the next bet, you know, how to do these things that they're going to need, not only for us, because even though we provide mm -hmm. a lot of exhibitions, there's a lot of other exhibitions out there that they want to apply for. Right. And they have to know how, what a 300 DPI image is, Mm -hmm. or what pixels and, and what have you, you know, and how to prepare a folder or how to, you know, each mm -hmm. publication or each exhibition has their own guidelines. Right. And the major thing that all of the artists should do is read them. Sometimes they don't read the guidelines. That's mm -hmm. another struggle I have. But my artists, of course, they all mm -hmm. read the guidelines and they know what they're doing. But these mm -hmm. other websites and the, these other exhibitions, they require something different than what I'm doing. Exactly. And they need to read and, 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 you know, and understand. So then if they have the backbone as far as the, you know, the history of what, of what they're doing with our communities, yours and mine, mm -hmm. then they have the tools that That's they it them can use for these other exhibitions and what have you, the opportunities that are out there. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about Patreon because that's also one of the newest platforms uh, which mm -hmm. uh, which came and what there might be some uh, some of our listeners who have never heard of Patreon doesn't don't know what that is, but Patreon is an online right. platform where anyone, uh, and it's particularly geared to the creative uh, cloud, the creative people, is that you can start a, a community. You know, that's what it is, a community platform. So, for example, if you are uh, an artist who does, um, you know, like uh, live drawing sessions and you want to, to mm -hmm. create a community around that, people who want to learn that, then you can do that to Patreon. And so they that's kind of... Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So th tell me a little bit about, how, you know, how you found out about it uh, and then when did you realize, well, this may be something that, that I could... Again, uh, kind of what you what you like to do, kind of test it, see how it works, and then uh, see see what how the features can fit to what I would like to do. Right. Well, I've known about Patreon for a while. I just only recently started using it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about about Patreon or any other website out there. I usually use it differently than anybody else does. Right. Because I I only use it if I feel. I test out a lot of websites. Every time there's something new, I test it out. Mm -hmm. And many, nine out of ten times, I don't like it and I leave. Right. But right. on Patreon, I, I, I stuck around it for a little while trying to figure, how can I use this? I am not, because I don't, I'm not an artist. I am an artist, but I don't use my art. You know, I hardly ever paint anymore. So I can't use it as an artist. Mm -hmm. But... It finally, one day, I said, oh, wait a minute. I have a publication, duh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hello. <Bingo. laughs> Hello up there. Okay. <laughs> so I said, well, you know, a lot of uh, exhibitions out there charge a fee. You know, when you want to, want to apply for an exhibition, normally there's some kind of fee involved. And I've right. never charged fees. Mm -hmm. And I've been offering service, you know, free service. Right. To shows, people just could just could have just, you know, our previous shows, they would just submit through the website and that'll be that. But there's a lot of work involved in that, you know? Right, right. And I'm and I'm I'm coming up with all these great shows and publications and I have PDFs, I have print, I have well, let me go ahead and set up a community on 
Patreon because I was trying to leave Facebook again, okay? <laughs> okay. So I was trying to leave Facebook <laughs> because I, I, I because of my love and hate relationship with Facebook. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's it. I'm just going to set up a Patreon page for poets, <laughs> artists. I could do it there. Right, and right. it worked. It mm-hmm. worked. Now, it's been a learning curve because I wasn't sure yet how the tiers would work best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think I've got it down now after five months. I think I've got it down where the entry level is at $5. Mm-hmm. And with a $5 monthly fee, you can submit to all my exhibitions, everything. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Everything you want, you can submit to all that. Then the $10 tier is where you'll receive, not only can you, you can submit to everything, but you also receive at least one year, one print yearly um, uh, publication, either a catalog or one of the magazines. And it, and I say yearly, just one, but sometimes mm-hmm. I send more than one. Okay. Then on the $25 fee entry, you receive whatever I print, mm. up to six, six minimum or more mm-hmm. a year. Mm-hmm. And then I have a $50 connoisseur tier, which is in case I sell somebody's art and they want to, and want to contribute towards a fee, towards mm-hmm. what I do, you know, because of the mm-hmm. sale. Because mm-hmm. usually I don't, usually I sell a lot of art behind the scenes that mm-hmm. people don't even realize about. And if the artist wants to, you know, give me an honorary fee, they could use that mm-hmm. Patreon fee mm-hmm. thing that I have. The, it's called the connoisseur level. Anyhow, so I've been using it, and now I'm up to about 250 um, members. That's fantastic, Didi. Congratulations. That's awesome. That yeah, it's great. really great, and, and and I'm helping them. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like it's, I'm just I'm really focusing on these particular artists and see what where I can place them in shows, mm-hmm. and I make sure that to give them other opportunities besides mine. I mean, I I mm-hmm. just today I posted a call for artwork for students that are uh, either mm-hmm. uh, either mass either getting their masters or bachelors in the arts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's a contest out there right now, and also uh, Just the Post magazine also posted it mm-hmm. that uh, it's a ten thousand dollar prize where Amy Sherald and Eric mm-hmm. Fischel and others are 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 the jurors. So wow. there's other opportunities out there besides you know all the great shows that I've got planned. And mm-hmm. if we have time, I'd like to just tell you about some of those. I don't know if yeah, we have yes, time of course. Or not. That's actually on my list oh. to see. What's coming, uh, okay. first, like, what kind of projects you have right now? And then also, what are the ones yeah. that are coming up, which I know they're pretty excited. It's one of the things that, before I go into that, that um, you also like to do a lot is uh, you are a planner. You plan way ahead so that oh, everybody yeah. knows mm-hmm. that what's going on and what's happening. And that's that's something that, you know, makes uh, our work a lot easier when every time that we work together, because we already know a year in advance where, where we where we doing, right? Exactly. So it exactly. works it works mm-hmm. smoothly. So tell us a little bit about the the projects that you have going on right now. Sure. And then, then you okay. can tell us what's coming. Well in January I was offered a booth mm-hmm. at the uh, Art Palm Beach International Fair. So yeah, the booth wanted to have a show of women painting women, but I said to them, you know, I'm, that's great about women painting women, but I don't necessarily, you know, want mm-hmm. that. I mm-hmm. want women to paint whatever they want. I don't care what they paint, you know, it doesn't have to be women. Mm-hmm. And, and so then I'm, and, and I told the, the fair that I been calling it WTF. I'm not <laughs> going to say what that is on, on air, but I think everybody can figure <laughs> it out. Right, right. And it's basically women painting WTF, whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, so the fair is actually called WTF. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 not the fair, but the, the, our, the my show is called the, WTF. The, the show at, at the booth, yeah, that's great. That's at the cool. booth, right, so it's called how many that. So you, have, how many artists do you have on that one? The, I told them I wanted to have 15 artists, and then they went back and forth with me about that, and I, I was going to pull out of the fair. Mm-hmm. Because they said no, because we don't, the the booths can't hold fifteen. And I, okay, then I won't have the show. Okay, if mm-hmm. I can't have my fifth, then thanks. You know, right. thank you for your time. And I and I was going to leave. And then the lady from the fair emailed me and said, oh, "We'll give you the fifteen mm-hmm. artists." So the That's fifteen so cool. artists, mm-hmm. right? So some one of them is Kit King, okay. and we have Erica Ilan Siganet, which we published before. Mm-hmm. 
And we have Katie Miller, Tanya Gant, and I have several others, but I have, I don't have it in front of me right now, but so I'm going to forget somebody. But uh, we have 15 females. Wonderful. And the whole idea behind it is that I'm trying not to have gender get into the picture anymore with art. Mm-hmm. I don't want to call it a women painting women. I don't want to call right. it a women artist. I, I mean, do we go around saying, oh, here's a group show of only men? No, exactly. we don't. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We don't. We don't say that. So that's why I'm, go- I'm trying to break gender, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the art. But that's, it's, this is a long battle. And right. it's not going to happen soon, but somebody has to do something. So mm-hmm. I try to, in most of my shows, I try to have it out, women outweigh the men. Mm-hmm. Even, mm-hmm. I intentionally do that. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not, you know, I shouldn't care, but I try to outweigh it because that's the only way we're going to get this done. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm going to have a show, I want to make sure if it's not equal Mm-hmm. amount of females and ma- and males and I have at least a little bit more females than males. Okay. So when I have a curator, when I ask a curator just one what is it just one curator involved, I usually mm-hmm. say to them, "Hey, if you're going to curate a show for me, I want it to be 70% females and minorities." And and usually that turns out just fine. So mm-hmm. it works. So, but so that's what we're doing for the show that Stephen DeLuise mm-hmm. is curating later in uh, 2018. And just in November, he has a show, mm-hmm. The Human Condition, and he's curating. And so far, he's he's doing pretty good with that formula. Great, great. So that's one of the shows we have next year. And we also have Visions of Venus, Venus's Visions. Mm-hmm. And that's in April at the Joe B. Art Center. Right. And... Uh, Elaine, Dr. Elaine Melody Schmidt is curating that. Mm-hmm. And then in um, July, we're going to be at the Wausau Museum of Contemporary Art with Painting the Figure Now, and Walt mm-hmm. Morton and I are curating that one. Okay. In August, we have a show over at your gallery, mm-hmm. and that's um, Chronicles of a Future Foretold. Mm-hmm. That's going to be at your gallery. And then in November, we have that show that I mentioned that Stephen DeLuce is curating. And that's by invite Mm -hmm. only. That one's by invite only. But the other ones Mm -hmm. are either open or for members of our Mm -hmm. our, uh, Patreon site to submit. Tell tell me a little bit also about the focus that... uh, you know that you you have on uh, figurative work, figured you know, artist work with the figure. Um, it, mm-hmm. Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about you know how those shows also fit with with that idea. Well, first of all, that's my brand. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't publish a lot of landscapes hardly ever, or mm-hmm. I don't publish you know abstract art. Mm-hmm. I publish figurative works. Okay. So that's what I concentrate on. That's my mm-hmm. show. All my shows are revolve, revolve around the figure in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but sometimes I, you know, I have a um, a show that I'm planning for 2019, which is still in the planning, but we haven't even announced it yet. Okay. But that particular curator wants to do it on realism. So it's not necessarily going to be about figure, figurative works, mm-hmm. but it's going to be centered around realism, hyper-realism, and photorealism, and what have you. Mm-hmm. That's his thing, and that's what he wants to do, and I'm fine with that. Right. And um, and so that show it has not been announced yet. We're trying to get a gallery to to see if they're interested in having a show in Australia. So in 2019, I have Stephen Bennett and his wife, Dr. Elaine Schmidt, curating a show for us at the Joby Art Center. And mm-hmm. that one I have up on the website. I also have. Connor Walton, who's um, who lives in Ireland, we're gonna have a show in Ireland. Wonderful. And this, and that theme is go wild, and we don't have the uh, the information about the show yet, except for the title for right now for these shows for 2019. Mm-hmm. And we're also going to have the show again, painting the figure now number two mm-hmm. at the Wausau Museum of Contemporary Art. But on that one, we're going to have several curators. 
Wonderful. I I'm reaching out to the press mm-hmm. and publisher other publishers and editors and writers to curate that one for us. Mm. So mm-hmm. far, I have you as one mm-hmm. of our curators. Thank I you. have Barry Blinderman, mm-hmm. who is who lives in town, the same town I live in. He lives in Normal, and I live in Bloomington, Illinois. And he runs the University Press. Okay. And in 2016, he um, curated a show. For, he's the one that curated Walter uh, Robinson hmm. and other great artists. So he's been around the New York scene and what have you for a long time, but he lives in town with where I live. Okay, and cool. so he's going to be also one of the curators. The other curator is Zach Tudor, who is runs Supersonic Art. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping to get a lot of young you know, artists mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that he brings in. Hopefully he brings in a lot of young artists. We also have Joseph Bravo who is also a curator and an uh, art critic, and, 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 um, and he's in San Antonio, Texas, and he's mm-hmm. also a writer. And then we also have Daniel Maidman, mm-hmm. who is part of the Poets Artist, but he also writes for the Huff- Huffington Post. Lorena mm-hmm. kluster Bower, who also writes for me and also other mm-hmm. publications, and me. Mm-hmm. So I'm, and then That's I a great crowd. Yeah, so that so I'm planning out. So this show is not until July of 2019, but I already have it planned. <laughs> I'm already planning on it. And you know why I do that? Mm-hmm. Because because if I leave something, I mean, sometimes my shows happen very quickly, and sometimes they happen like within a, a few months. Mm-hmm. You know, is that it, serendipity and whatever that happens too? But right. usually I plan it out a, over a year in advance sometimes because I want to make sure that I secure the space. Mm-hmm. And that I have the curators that I want, mm-hmm. and in some cases I can we can we can uh, ask artists ahead, you know, way ahead of time, really high end artists who who are hard to get. Mm-hmm. Or if we catch them early enough, they may say yes. Right. Uh, right. Although that also has a, a flip side where they say oh, where they tell me the opposite. Oh, that's too far out. I don't know. You know. Then I also <laughs> get those mm-hmm. responses, but. The sooner I plan it, the better. The early worm catches, right. or, or sorry, the early bird catches the worm. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> so, so anyway. And, and something that I love about you is that you are not afraid to ask also. You know, you ask, right. you knock mm-hmm. on doors, and if they say no, well, we still, they say no, what else, right? We move on. But uh, you're always you know what? Uh, uh-huh. go ahead. Yeah, you know why? It's a Cuban saying, no tengo pelo en la lengua. Meaning, <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, I don't have any problem speaking. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so I don't mind opening up my mouth and asking a question. What's the worst that, that can happen? Somebody will tell me, no, Didi, you back <laughs> off. Okay, <laughs> a, bye, see you later. <laughs> right, we will move on to the next one. <laughs> you know, right, the right. next guy, you know, move but, on but to be- the next guy. But because of that attitude. Because it's always the next guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead. But because with that attitude, you know, a lot of opportunities have opened up. And, uh, you know, I think uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, artists who have worked with you have that to thank you for because you're always snacking, not only on finding venues, but also looking for collectors. You know, that's something that, you know, we have conversations right. about that. And you're very avidly looking mm-hmm. behind the scenes, you know, uh, looking for collectors who may be interested in the artists that you have in the right. in the works that we're showing in the shows, even in shows that mm-hmm. are like a year ahead, but you're already looking for collectors collectors that might be interested in that type of work and that kind of thing. So it, right. it, th- there's a lot of activity that happens behind the scenes that you, know, you right. are you are doing to help artists, um, you know, c- continue to have the, the success that they're having in their career and, and have opportunities and, and things of that nature. And, and I think, uh, you know, we we are excited when that happens. We are excited when, when an opportunity happens and, and uh, you know, uh, the artists get the spotlight because that, that, that's what's important mm-hmm. in those shows. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the back end people don't know about. But, right. I, you know, I do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so. That's wonderful. So, but anyhow. <laughs> so, well, it is, I think this has been a great conversation. Believe it or not, I think we've been, we've been on, on it for like about 40 minutes or so. <laughs> so, we're, yeah. we're going to be wrapping it out soon. Uh, Before we do that, I'm sure some of our friends who are listening to the Artist Next Level podcast uh, want to find you. If you can tell us where to find you online, tell us uh, also how they can find you in Patreon and uh, what's the process to to get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. Sure. If they just go to my main website, poetsandartists.com, right there on the front page, there is a link to the membership. You could click on that. You could also take a look at all our upcoming calls. 
including mm-hmm. 2018 and 2019. Okay. And just go through all the different calls, see if this is for you. I mean, what I do is not for everybody. Okay, mm-hmm. not everybody, you know. Right. There's artists out there that don't need that are not figurative artists. They don't need to, you mm-hmm. know, join because I'm not really going to. I'm not going to be much of a service to them unless it's mm-hmm. something that mm-hmm. they want to learn about social media or some of the other aspects mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. of our community of what I'm doing for our, the rest of the artists. Right. But usually, if you're a figurative artist, you should really check it out because mm-hmm. it really will help you in one way or the other. It really mm-hmm. will. Right. And the best way to do it is just go to the main website. It's all there for you. You just have to, you know, make the initiative and see if it's something that you want me, if you want me to work for you. Because that's what okay. I'm doing. I'm working for these artists. I'm, I'm not, they're not working for me. I'm working for them. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's how it works. Awesome. So hopefully. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful, Lily. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, all your insights. And before we close also, I would love to, ask if you, you know, if you had one word of advice for an emerging artist, maybe somebody who's listening right now, who's just starting their art career, uh, what would that be? If, I, I would say to, to not be afraid to ask, mm-hmm. ask a question. Like I said, the worst case scenario is either you'll, you'll get a no, sorry, mm-hmm. you know, I can't help you, or They'll ignore you, which is also another way of saying no. <laughs> mm-hmm. But in some, but in some cases, they'll say, "Yeah, how can I help you?" You know, that sounds cool. Let me, you know, I'm willing to to uh, listen to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to approach somebody that you feel may help you. There's no right. the the worst case is that you know they won't. Right. And so you move on to the next guy because there's always the next guy. Always right. there's it's- always somebody around the corner. That will say yes. That's right. And I'll, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people that will probably say yes. What mm-hmm. do you need? Exactly. Well, thank so, you, Didi. I think, I think that's wonderful advice. Definitely something that we can all learn from mm-hmm. as well. And it's something that advice that you live it because you do it. I see you doing it all the time. And the results, you know, are now documented mm-hmm. in all these wonderful magazines, all these wonderful shows and reviews that have been done about the things that you do. And it's been a pleasure over the last few years. So oh, also thank you, sir. Collaborating with you, yeah, in different mm-hmm. things and, uh, you know, working with so many artists. And for me also, getting to, uh, through you, through your projects, getting to know many artists that I did not know before. And some of them who also, because of that, end up also being a guest here in my podcast. So, you know, it's it's one thing always leads to another and opportunities continue to bounce back and yeah. forth. So that Thank is Thank fan- you. That is fantastic. So with this, I, I want to, really yep. Thank you, Didi. With this, I want to thank, uh, thank you for being uh, here today. I want to thank all our friends here at the Next Level podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out Didi Menendez on, uh, you know, on Instagram as well. What's your Instagram handle, uh, Didi, on there? Poet, poets artist. Poets I artists? have like five. Yeah, I have a lot of Instagrams. <laughs> Okay, which one is the one you want to share? <laughs> the main, the main website uh, for the po- it's poets artists. Poets artists. Together. Okay, that's what you yeah, find together. it. Yeah. That's what you find mm-hmm. it on Instagram, and of course, uh, go to poetsandartists.com dot com to find more information about Didi, about Patreon, and all the projects that are coming up as well. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.